Thanks very much. With me now is Democratic Congressman Mike Quigley. He's a member of the Intelligence and the Appropriations Committees. Congressman, thanks so much for taking the time this morning. Thank you. Good morning. So you heard the conversation there. Ukraine has launched an investigation of Yovanovitch and announced so publicly. Should the State Department announce an investigation of this? And should we hear from the Secretary of State defending a, a U.S. ambassador? We should have already. Uh, we, have, we heard from the ambassador's testimony just how j dangerous their jobs can be. Uh, she was literally in the line of fire. Uh, you detailed how uh, we have lost ambassadors in the past. It's a dangerous job and a critical job. Uh, they face enough dangers on their own. Uh, we can't be uh, in any way hesitant to do everything possible to keep them safe and to make sure that the other ambassadors know that we will do just that and that those who would threaten them uh, will be halted. So uh, I would like to think we'd already hear, would have heard about this or that we'll hear about it very shortly. Let me ask you about the ongoing uh, impeachment trial now in the Senate. Uh, you've heard a number of Republican senators, David Perdue among them just yesterday, saying that the Senate should not consider new witnesses and new evidence, that that was the job of the House. Looking back, should Democrats in the House have waited for courts to order witnesses to testify there, uh, waited longer, in effect, before impeaching the president? You know, I was torn on that myself because I was so interested in hearing from people like, like mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Bolton and, and others. But I think in the final analysis, we're probably talking about the possibility of a year, right? A possibility that this takes place after the November election. Uh, and clearly, this president needs to be held accountable before that. We've seen how long these courts have taken. Even if they had ruled that, uh, for example, John Bolton had to testify and he showed up and started taking uh, the absolute immunity defense that others have, that courts have ruled against, that puts it off for three or four more months and the appeals that go with it. So in the final analysis, you had to move forward to, again, hold the president accountable and educate and inform the American people. You're seeing the partisan lines form in the Senate here, with some exceptions, because there have been Republican senators who say they're willing to, uh, to, hear, from, to hear from witnesses. But, but I wonder, as you look at this process going forward, do you believe that this will be a meaningful trial in the Senate, a meaningful consideration of the witnesses and testimony? Or are you concerned uh, that, that most of uh, the Republicans, and even most of the Democrats, for that matter, have already made up their minds? Look, they take a sworn oath to impartial justice. The American people have asked for that. Over 72 percent want witnesses. Uh, they want the documentation. And they know what it looks like, right? Uh, they appreciate the fact that in trials, that people don't come there, the jury doesn't say he's guilty, but go ahead. Uh, they wait till they hear all the testimony and they see all the documents. Uh, I'd like to think that that pressure will give at least four Republican centers the intestinal fortitude necessary to demand just that so the American people mm -hmm. can be educated and informed. We'll take it a day at a time. You know, I said, we should, I've heard people say, well, don't do this unless you're sure you can win. Uh, mm -hmm. That's not how the Constitution reads. Uh, we did our constitutional duty moving forward. It's the Senate's turn. I want to talk about another issue. You, of course, sit on the Intelligence Committee. Uh, what you hear from senior intelligence officials, both in public and private settings, is important to you. A source is telling CNN the top intelligence officials have asked Congress uh, to hold uh, worldwide threats briefings. This, this is something that is done regularly and in public by senior intelligence officials, that they be held behind closed doors. A and the reason, of course, this request coming after last year's testimony, w when chiefs uh, intelligence chiefs testified and drew the ire of the president for frankly disagreeing uh, with him. Uh, let me just put one of those tweets up on the screen here now because you get a sense. The intelligence people seem to be extremely passive and naive when it comes to the dangers of Iran. They are wrong. Uh, and it goes on there. That, you know, uh, what is your response to this effort to now hold these in private, it seems, to avoid the ire of the president? Yeah, it's a, it's a horrible idea. In a democracy, it's tough enough that the intelligence community has to operate in secret in an otherwise open government, or at least that's what we strive for. So at least once a year, the core of the intelligence community comes forward and explains in front of the public in an unclassified version uh, exactly what the threats are and what they're doing about it. This is what transparency is all about. 
It's what the oversight role of the House and Senate committees, on, select committees on intelligence is all about. To say that they want to move that to a classified uh, session takes away that opportunity to yeah. let the public know what those threats are, and certainly now they ought to know what they are and exactly what they're doing to address those threats. The fact that the president didn't like their views shows even more the president doesn't understand and value what the intelligence community does, yeah. and he wants them to be his lapdog. That's extremely dangerous. They need mm -hmm. to operate independently to keep us safe. F final question. We we've now learned that Iran's missile strike on a U.S. base in Iraq did cause U.S. casualties, though discovered days later, specifically traumatic brain injury uh, concussions from, from, from the effect of, the, of those blasts here. I wonder, immediately following, the president, the administration said Iran missed. There was some uh, reporting speculation that Iran deliberately missed, but, but it looks that those were very near misses. And our reporter on the ground there spoke to witnesses who said that these, these bombs dropped just yards from where they were. Does this raise questions about what exactly Iran's intention was with those missile strikes and raise questions about the administration's response? Well, I think it raises questions about their response and their transparency. Uh, all the more reason to bring these things to light publicly and hide what is an extraordinarily opaque uh, administration's tactics. Uh, our concerns and thoughts are that with those injured by this attack and recognize that our, our um, forces are in harm's way, especially now after this uh, strike on Soleimani. So yeah. uh, we fight for transparency and, and the true arguments as to why this took place in the first, in the first place. Hmm. Well, and TBI is, is no small thing. Uh, Congressman Mike Quigley, uh, good to have you on the program this morning. Anytime.